to man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by Joe. Usually, using wrestling parlance, you could say this might be a loser leave town match as the SEC West race is heating up and two contenders go at it today in our Jefferson Pilot Game of the Week as Auburn travels to Oxford to meet the Ole Miss Rebels in one of those classic Southeastern Conference showdowns, and it's coming your way in a matter of moments. And hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Neal alongside my partner, Mr. Dave Rowe. And Dave, you could say these two clubs are coming off weekends that were completely different. Auburn oh. demolishes LSU and well Ole Miss struggled against Arkansas losing by 20 but let's start with Auburn and their defense last week. They put the clamps on the Tigers in a big way and it starts at the linebackers. Oh spot. it does Dave. The strength of, the, of this defense is the linebackers number one two and three tacklers. Carlos Dansby big play speed strength. Mark Brown, hard nose, throwback to the old days. And then Dontarius Thomas, he's got speed, range, and a nose for the football. Plays great. They were excellent last week. As a matter of fact, the last six quarters, they've only given up 14 points, have the Auburn Tiger defense. Now, Ole Miss, they're struggling running the football. That has been a problem for them the last month. That means that Eli Manning is going to have to bear a lot more of the pressure again today. But when you have no running game, you have got to throw it. As evidenced last week, 56 throws, 42 completions, 400 yards. But the big question, Dave, is can you throw it 40 times a game and stay healthy? He's got a big target on his chest today. We shall see what Eli Manning has in store today. 56 passes last week. David Cutcliffe. Whoa. Roam those sidelines today and his counterpart Tommy Tuberville on the other side. Cutcliffe 28 and 16 in his fourth year as the head coach replacing Tommy Tuberville. Ole Miss won the toss. They deferred so Auburn will kick off. Lee Rogers will put his foot to leather in a matter of moments. Trey Smith and Dee Durham back to return the kick and it bounces off Trey Smith's hand. They'll cover it up in the end zone and Auburn will take over at the 20. Well, certainly Auburn lost a big part of their offense when Cadillac Williams went down, but Buzz, it hadn't been so bad, has it? No, it really hadn't, Dave. You hear coaches say it all the time. Some people say it's a cliche, but when one guy goes down, the next guy's got to step up. Cadillac Williams meant so much to the Auburn offense. Look at that, 106 yards and eight points, almost nine points of contest. But what's Ronnie Brown done since he's gotten into the lineup? He's made the most of his chances, and he has been just about unstoppable. 6.5 yards per carry and four TDs in the last two games, Dave. And you can add one receiving to that, so five total. But play action, and Campbell unloads just before he gets taken down at the one intended receiver was a tight end Robert Johnson the pressure came from Josh Cooper and they were going to reverse out on this play and run to the weak side and Josh Cooper just made a great play backside containment little play fake come across there and look at Josh Cooper he was fortunate he got that football away was Jason Campbell crowd wanted grounding but yeah. But Robert Johnson was right there about a foot from the football. So instead, it's just second down and 10. That would have been a big, big loss. Crowd into it early in Oxford. Here's Ronnie Brown. He'll pick up four. That'll bring up third down. Well, let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups, beginning with the Auburn offensive group. And Ronnie Brown, as we mentioned, back there at tailback. We'll see the freshman, the true freshman, Trey Smith, as well. Devin Aroma should do is the true freshman wideout has been very big as well. This offensive line been a little bit nicked up throughout the season, but playing pretty well last week had perhaps their best game of the season. There is Tommy Tuberville, the former Ole Miss head football coach, now roaming the sidelines of Auburn. Third down and six. Pressure coming and down goes Campbell at the 15. That is strong. Well, great pressure on this play. You're going to see Justin Wade, number 51, and Eddie Strong on a double blitz, and he just crushed the pocket. They had to get pressure, and Dave, they did on that down. The Ole Miss defense, as you see, their sack totals moments ago really improved in that department. Just a dozen a year ago. Back to punt, Damon Duvall, one of the best in the country. 
It's a low kick that will bounce at midfield and go out of bounds at the 45 and Ole Miss will have a relatively short field for their first possession of the football game a 40 yard kick by Duvall. Well, let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineup for the Ole Miss offensive group. Bill Flowers is playing with a separated shoulder but had a huge game last week with 11 catches. Up front Trey Stallings the true freshman tackle guards the backside of Eli Manning he'll be tested today big time by that front four of Auburn. Last week Eli Manning was uh, was just uh, going to clinic on how to play quarterback. You see that only 14 incompletions in 56 attempts 414 yards the second most in school history. But they had to play catch up. Don't want to do it today that's for sure. Manning's first pass. Looking for Bill Flowers, but it goes incomplete. Second down and ten. Manning gets the pass off, gets a couple on the play. That went to Rick Rosano, the fullback. Traveris Robinson on the tackle. That'll bring up third down and about, I'd give him seven, seven and a half. And Dave, it's going to be interesting to watch Ole Miss and their offensive philosophy. They cannot afford to have Eli Manning get hit. They're going to use a little bit of roll action, a little short passes, try to hold when they get that opportunity to go deep. This is what John Latina, the offensive coordinator for Ole Miss, wanted to avoid these third and longs, and he's facing one right out of the gate at third and seven. Four wide receivers in the game. Pressure coming and Dansby the big play man with another one and a flag comes down at the 42 as well. We'll wait on the flag official today our referee is Terry Brown. And he will speak with us in a matter of moments. Oh. oh. Now if that's a five yard face. That'll still be well shy the first down but if it's a. That'll be a five yard penalty. Yeah, that was just in the tackling of it. When you see Dan, when you see Dansby come from the outside from left of your screen, number 11, you'll see him wrap him up here, and the hand goes across the face mask. Again, top of your screen. Dansby is just such a force. He rushes inside to see him get the hand right away there and took it right back off, but that's the inadvertent five yard penalty. Well, they'll get another crack at third down. Only need two yards. Quick throw to Flowers. It's caught. That'll be a first down inside Auburn territory. Run out of bounds at the 42 of Auburn. Traveris Robinson, the defender on the play for Auburn. Well, this is just almost like an extended handoff. Look how quick the ball is thrown outside. That's the way you avoid pressure if you're a quarterback and you're just and then you have no running game. Boy, Dansby though really making yep. his presence felt there. Nearly picked up his fifth sack of the season. Instead, the face mask gives Ole Miss an opportunity to keep the drive alive. Delayed handoff. That goes to Torrance Sanford. Torrance been banged out most of this season. Coaches really were hoping to get him more involved today. Toward a, a fullback by nature, but played a little tailback in high school and said we might even see him in that role today. <laughs> Ole Miss's running attack has been uh, abysmal yeah. for two weeks, Dave. 40 yards in the last two games, 53 attempts. That boils down to a .75 yard. <laughs> That's per a, rush average. That's terrible. You can't you can't do that. But they picked up five yards on that first down. That's a good play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Go. Manning to throw again. Uh, incomplete at the 33 yard line. Attentive receiver was Mike Espy. You can see what Ole Miss is starting to do, Dave. A lot of what Florida did against Auburn a few weeks ago in the first half when Rex Grossman did a lot of these short four to six yard patterns a lot of out patterns and just move the football down the field that way. Yeah just picking them apart what the defense gives you if they give you that four or five yard pattern. Also your deep your offensive linemen don't have to block that long. Third down and five. Four wide outs. Press coverage on the corners from Auburn. Trey Stallings, a left tackle, may have uh, moved a little bit. 
play clock was down to two. And that'll be a make it a third down and ten situation. So Ole Miss will change formations and change sets. Get Terry Brown's mic working. Yeah. Come on, Terry. <laughs> Speak up. Well, a lot of concern this week on David, David Cutcliffe's team. They they have know they have got to be able to move the football on first down. Third down and ten. Little play action, man, over the middle. Had his receiver open. Trey Freifogel snuck behind the linebackers underneath the secondary. And Eli just missed him. Oh, he did. Right crossing pattern coming right to left. Look at him. He's wide open right there. Oh, man. If you're Eli Manning, you want this one back. If you can see it on Manning. Just let the ball float on him. Deliver that ball. Step forward. Throw that thing on a rope. And look at You can see Eli Manning. You see the emotion? He knows that's one he's got to have. Cody Ridgeway punts it away. Fair catch called by Marcel Willis at the nine yard line a 33 yard punt so Auburn backed up with their second possession coming we're scoreless in Oxford it's our JP SEC game of the week Eli Manning trying to uh, ask somebody if he could have that throwback <laughs> yes absolutely that was one that was a perfect pass he had him but the good news though if you're an uh, Ole Miss fan is you've backed up Auburn Inside the 10. Auburn's offense. Uh, false start coming up that left tackle. Terry Brown will probably tell us that left tackle Mark Perra moved a little bit. Well, we didn't have a chance to show you that Ole Miss defense the first time around because they were uh, off the field so quick. But Jesse Mitchell's been playing extremely well up front. Eddie Strong, I need a big game for him. Only 20 tackles this season. He did miss, but for the most part, the first four games of the season. Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown shows us he's got some good speed. Gets outside, about two yards shy of the first down. Gain of 13. And David, speed to the hole with Ronnie Brown. He gets there so quickly. Watch this. When he gets the football, watch how quickly he's going to get to the hole, out to the outside there. Watch this. Just jump through, and now you're just in the foot race trying to catch him from the back. The second down and short. And off goes to Brown again. He gets the corner one more time. Brown out to the 30 yard line. Good, strong running by Ronnie Brown. What a great block on the corner. Mark Perra, number 69. He drives Josh Cooper off. That's what allows him to get to the outside. Again, look right there, 69. See him just driving him off the line? Gosh, he's three, four yards off the, off the line. And what about Ronnie Brown? They talk about tough finishers? He runs over you. Auburn's offensive line, though well, they were just flat out awesome last week against a good defensive front of LSU. Flag comes down at about the 26 yard line as Brown picks up uh, maybe a half yard. Justin Wade on the tackle for the Rebels. Ball start against the Auburn Tigers. Terry Brown's mic is down, obviously, so that'll leave us to be in charge of uh, kind of uh, determining what the calls are. And and uh, good thing Dave Rose up here. <laughs> <laughs> when the Jefferson Violet Sports Crew is on the road covering SEC football, we like to eat at Huddle House and always enjoy their big house breakfast and lunch platters. First and 15, again for Auburn. Pass is caught on the far side of Marcel Willis. Gains five on the play. That'll bring up second down and ten. Jason Campbell last week, Dave, 
just good game management. Yeah. Only threw the ball 11 times, uh, but really did some things to, uh, as you said when we talked to Coach Coverville, didn't hurt the football team in one aspect of the game. Well, they got so many points off of turnovers. They got great field position, and he played to win. And he took over for that man, Daniel Cobb, who has really been uh, helpful in terms of getting Jason ready for these games. No gain for Ronnie Brown, and you saw Ronnie slip. That is a bad, bad piece of land over there at between the 20 and the 40 on the far side of the field. Yeah, trying to change direction is going to be tough because, again, it's worn down. It's just, it's just dirt over there, and you can't get those cleats in there. Let's check in with Buzz. The, the uh, Ole Miss folks say it appears that something has gotten into the root system, and from the last time we were here, it has spread. And those places where it looks bare, it's been painted, and there is nothing there for guys to get any traction right in this part of the field that Auburn's operating from. Yeah, well, Buzz, they are right in the heart of that uh, dirt, if you will, on third down and 10. Campbell has time, fires, nearly picked off, looking for Willis. And it looked as though Will, uh, Marcel Willis might have fell down in, in his route. Wes Scott nearly had the INT. Well, Scott read the eyes of the quarterback well. He just steps right in front of the receiver. Wes Scott, watch this again. You look at the quarterback's eyes. You're coming from center field, and he had the football. Good shot there on Willis. He tripped, and again, he's in that, uh, that barren area of land. Well, the Ole Miss defense has had two pretty good stops. Duvall has to punt this a good high kick. Armstead will call for the fair catch at the 30 yard line. We are scoreless with 8.21 to go. Stay with us, folks. More coming your way after this word from your local stations. We are back on a cool afternoon in Oxford, Mississippi. Temperatures probably not even reached 50 yet. They said it would be about 53 today, but I somebody was uh, out last night that made that decision. Got a little bit late. Handoff goes to Deshaun Pearson, the freshman. Carlos Dansby makes the tackle, a gain of four. Well, this, is, this is Mark Brown. He's the leading tackler. Watch Trey Stallings come up and just push him out. Good cut on the backside, cut against it. Mark Brown, he usually plays a lot stronger than that. Four or five yards, first down. Hey, that's a great play for Ole Miss. Second down and five for Ole Miss. And that's the kind of success that uh, Coach Cutcliffe really wanted. He wanted four to six yards on first down all afternoon. Manning going up top. Overshoots his receiver on the far side. That was Jason Armstead covered by Carlos Rogers. Pizza Hut scoreboard today. How about this one early on? Rutgers in Miami. And it appears that Miami will fall from number two in the BCS regardless of what they do against Rutgers today because Rutgers comes in with one win. And if Notre Dame can stay alive, uh, Miami would fall to number three in the BCS rankings. Strange, strange scenario. Yeah. May not matter if Miami can't turn it around down seven to three. Third down. Eli Manning sacked at the 25. Spencer Johnson, who we didn't even think would play today, picks up the sack, a loss of 10. Well, Spencer Johnson is on that sore ankle. And Duff does a great move in there, uses his arms. You see him on the right of your screen, just keeps on forcing his way through and just bursts through into Manning's face. That's what you've got to do. You've got to split tackles as a defensive end. That's only the eighth sack allowed this season. They allowed 10 last year, the fewest in the SEC. Good kick. Ridgeway sends Willis back inside the 20. And Willis doesn't go much further at the 23-yard line. A 57-yard kick, a four-yard return. Ridgeway, Ridgeway is 10th in the nation in punting, and you see a little bit of it there. Jason Campbell ready to come out when we come back. We are scoreless. First quarter, 6.46 to go. Combined 37 yards of offense to this point. Campbell. Over the middle, wide open, and dropped by the tight end, Lorenzo Diamond, at the 35-yard line to mishandle him, and Auburn did.
Here's Brown. No game. Justin Wade fills the hole and is the first man on the spot for Ole Miss. Correct myself, they yeah, Arkansas State the following week, but they've been on the road for the last couple of weeks, so this crowd anxious to get their Rebels back on the winning track. Ronnie Brown couldn't make much out of that. Gains a couple LP spents with the stop for the Rebels, and Damon Duvall will have to come back out for the third time already here in the first quarter and punt the football away. And Dave, the first thing I will tell you is that I see Ole Miss playing with tremendous spirit. I mean, they are playing enthusiastically. They've been maligned the last couple of weeks. Duvall first in the SEC in punting. It's a high kick. Armstead fair catch at the 32 yard line. And a flag comes down late. That's the fourth Auburn penalty, but first down and 10 now. Ole Miss a good field position. Manning to throw. Flowers into double coverage. And it looks as though Roger Hood might be a little banged up down there at the 27 yard line. It's our JP game of the week. Auburn and Ole Miss. Dave Neal, pick a Dave. Rowe and Baker. <laughs> Glad you could join us on a cool afternoon from Oxford, Mississippi. Manning under pressure tries to set up the screen. Pass is knocked down. First down marker is at the Auburn 47. Deshaun Pearson runs into his own player. Ran right into Marcus Johnson. Gets three or four on the play. Little delay at handoff goes to Sanford. Sanford gets to the 40 and stopped right there. And Ole Miss will have to punt it away. Mel Ages and DeMarco McNeil on the stop for Auburn. It is, it is a punt. Gosh, we've seen Duval, what, three times already? Ridgeway with a nice high spiral. Willis at the 15, a flag goes down. Willis out to the 26 yard line, a 45 yard punt, a four yard return, but we'll wait on that flag, which rests at the Auburn 35. The, the way the officials reported it initially, they said it was from the end of the run, but they said that was incorrect. They told Tommy Tuberville the penalty went from the end of the kick, not from the end of the run. They're pinned up again, are the Tigers, and Ole Miss is playing the run defense really well. Ronnie Brown. Brown, does he get the corner? He does. Ronnie Brown out to midfield. On his feet inside the 40. What a run from a sophomore out of Cartersville, Georgia. Finally brought down by McKinley Boykin. A gain of 56 yards. Formation. Play fake to the fullback, and here's a little option to Brown. Brown just spins his way, could have lost a couple, but instead gains a couple. Flags are down, but Brown is shy of the first down by about three yards. Inside the 30, it was Josh Cooper, the first man on the spot for Ole Miss, but we'll wait on that flag, as we have said all throughout this first quarter. There's 126 to go. Third down and 12. Campbell on the run, fires, passes, caught. That'll be an Auburn first down at the 25, Anthony Mix. The 235 pound freshman receiver with a big catch. Single setback is Trey Smith. Campbell throws. And I think Aroma should do. Probably saw too many blue jerseys and lost focus on that football because he was running right into a herd of them. Second down and 10. And Brown gets maybe a yard. Eddie Strong with another tackle. 
Well, this is the Eddie Strong that we're used to seeing. Playing the ball, getting to it, using that great speed and strength that he has. Auburn one of four on third down conversions. A lot of talking going on. We'll see how this looks for Auburn. Campbell fires. Pass is caught, but well shy of the first down. Marcel Willis caught the pass, and Kelvin Robinson was right on the spot. Now to bring up fourth down, and this is right in that area where Tommy Tuberville might say, what the heck? Bring the offense back on the field. Here we go. Campbell fires, hits his tight end, Robert Johnson down to the five. And out of bounds at the two. Brown stops short. He'll be about a half a foot to a foot away. Boy, they, this is crunch time for if you're a defense. If you're offense, you're just plowing the ball in there. But if you're defense, got to get penetration, hope those backers can stuff them. Bobby Petrino, the offensive coordinator, had a great plan last week against LSU. Three tight ends in the game now for Auburn. Johnson's the fullback, Brown the tailback. That's Walls in motion, it's Brown. And he sneaks in off the left side. Touchdown, Auburn. His seventh rushing touchdown of the season. And Auburn is on the board first. No surprise on the play. You follow your fullback, Brandon Johnson, number 45. And then you just kind of keep those legs going and let those big offensive linemen drive you into the end zone. Heads up play. 13-28 to go in the second quarter. Dave Neal, Dave Rowe, and Buzz Baker with you. Glad you could join us on a cool, crisp fall afternoon in Oxford, Mississippi. Great day for football. Tommy Tuberville got off the bus today, looked at me, and said, now this is football weather. Oh, I love it. This is my kind of weather. Damon Duvall to kick off. Damon Duvall had an excellent game last week against LSU, keeping Dominic Davis from really uh, getting on tracks. Here's Armstead, the burner, out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. Good return for Jason Armstead. Eli Manning today just not uh, off to a good start. Two of seven. Well, it hasn't been a good uh, quarter for him. He was hurried. He had miscommunications, little short passes he's trying to get successful. But the big one is that he overthrew. Unbelievable. Just has not had a good quarter. It's not Eli Manning football. We got to go back. It looks to be uh, there was a flag thrown offsides against Dahlberg, but declined by Ole Miss. So the Rebels will take the first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. Nothing doing for George Sanford. And Dave, Ole Miss trying to stay with that running game. You've got to keep them honest. If not, they just load up on you. And that running game could help the passing game because Manning under a lot of pressure in that first quarter. Robert Williams, number 35 for Ole Miss, is the senior starting tailback that has been uh, hurt with an ankle, now a shoulder. Uh, coaches said it would be a game time decision whether or not we see him today. We have yet to see him carry the football, so there's still time, but Robert Williams may go today. Manning fires, pass is incomplete, big hit. A combination of guys, Carlos Dansby and Carlos Rogers. And one of the things that Auburn is doing is they're sitting in the short area. In other words, there are a lot of people. You see the number of people in that five to seven yards? Two white shirts. They're just coming right in there, good stick. Come in there, tackle the football. So not only are they getting pressure on Manning, they're covering them in that short area. Third down and 10 is on Pearson. Single setback, tailback in this formation. Two receivers to the top, one to the near side. Manning. Five step drop. Pass batted in the air again. Spencer Johnson, who didn't practice all week and didn't play against LSU, 
has had two big plays today with a sack and now a batted down pass. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is three and out. Look at this. Get the hands up. The pocket is collapsing around him. He's trying to hurry his pass. And Spencer Johnson right in his face. Cody Ridgeway to punt for the Rebels. Willis back to return. High kick. Fair catch called for by Willis, and that's the same scenario that happened moments ago when Armstead called for a fair catch, and Auburn folks won a penalty, don't get it. Football fans, register to win a million dollars in the Bell South Million Dollar Kick Contest. Visit jpsports.com to register and check out the schedule for the Bell Zone E-Zone rolling on to college campuses around the South. Sign up and then start practicing your field goals. The grand prize winner gets a chance to kick for $1 million at the 2002 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl game on New Year's Eve. Peach Bowl, Peach Bowl folks are here. The game today, a lot of them are starting to see more and more bowl people show yeah. up at these ball games. As we hit November, the home stretch. And what has been a crazy year in the SEC. Here's Ronnie Brown. Trying to get to the outside, gets seven, eight on the play, and a late flag comes down right in front of the Auburn bench. Eric Oliver made the tackle for Ole Miss. This may be a late face mask, but I'll tell you, the only way you make a move like that is if you have speed, you get to the outside because it was blocked at the hole. The face mask. Looks like there's going to be a face mask coming. Let's see if we can perhaps see. There's the, that's perfect. There's the call right there. The hand on the face mask. The official from the backside saw it. Again, we may see it this way here. All the face mask, all the hand does is have to get on the face mask. That's Robinson there with the face mask, with the hand up there. Brown now 12 carries 99 yards and penalties uh, it's a good many for a quarter and a half not even a quarter and a half aroma should do trying to get a block does so picks up the fur oh, he steps out of bounds at the 48 a couple of yards shy of the first down good block Ronnie Brown put on Von Hutchins if you're old miss, you've got to get off those blocks. You've got to shed them. You've got to push off. Use that upper body arm strength. Get rid of the block. Move to the ball. Auburn came in first in the SEC and third down conversion opportunities. And on second four, we'll try to avoid a third down. But we'll look at a third down. Third and two coming up for Auburn. Ronnie Brown gets a couple. Auburn has been very good in third down conversions, but uh, their red zone offense has been a struggle. They have their last in percentage, but they've been in the red zone more than anybody. 43 times this year. Look at that, 102 yards by Ronnie Brown already today. Diamond and Wallace are your two tight ends, and they help create some space for Ronnie Brown. Brown down the sidelines. He will go the distance. A 49-yard scamper that results in six for Auburn. And Ronnie Brown now over 150 yards. Still have 11-21 to go in the second quarter. Well, I talked about shedding blocks. You've got to get off the block. Watch Ronnie Brown just turn it on. He went through the hole untouched. Didn't have to break any strides. Just ran through there full speed. So you got to credit those big offensive line up front. Lindsey, Perra, Nowland. How about Ronnie Brown? <laughs> it's a good game. That's not a good half. That's a good game. Well, that's 14 to nothing. Auburn behind the play of Ronnie Brown and a solid offensive line lead by two touchdowns.
Back at Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi, the Tigers have scored two touchdowns in the second quarter to take a 14 to nothing lead. Damon Duvall set to kick off. What a show Ronnie Brown has put on. Ole Miss needs to get their offense going. They have uh, struggled, to say the least, today. Armstead will take it in the end zone and go to a knee, and Ole Miss will take over at the 20. But, Dave, how about Ronnie oh, Brown? Well, he's been the story, let me tell you. Incredible first half of football, just running with reckless abandon in there. He's got great speed to the hole. He trusts his blockers. He's tough. He follows his blocks. Then when he gets to the outside, he bursts the speed. And then he just follows in there, follows that block of the fullback. And when he needs it, boy, he can go to that second and third gear. And nobody's going to catch him. 49 yards on that last one for a touchdown. 151 yards today. Last year, he rushed 25 times for 84 yards against the Rebels. Here's the handoff to Deshaun Pearson. That gets about four on the play. I mean, now Ronnie Brown has scored seven total touchdowns in the last two and a half games. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> well, when we saw Cadillac Williams go down, we turned around and said, oh, boy, it's going to be a tough year for Auburn to lose a player of that caliber. You know what? Cadillac can sit over there and watch right now because that young man... He may not be a Cadillac, but he's a, he's a pretty high-priced car. Well, we wish Cadillac all the best <laughs> yes. in his recovery. I know it's been a tough time for him. As Manning's pass is caught and then dropped out of bounds, that'll be a complete pass. They needed to get to the 30 for the first down. It'll be a couple of yards shy. Carlos Rogers put the hit on Bill Flowers, but... Boy, they, you know, you need a little bit more than that short pass. I know that, uh, you know, I know you're trying to take pressure off your quarterback and your offensive line for blocking, but you got to get more than six, seven yards. You've got to get in that eight to ten ring. I think the loss of Ziegler is a huge thing for Ole Miss. When they lost him, they lost such a force at tight end. Manning now three of ten on third down and two. Some pressure coming. Manning gets the pass off. It's caught by Espy out over the 41st down. And I think that was as big a play in this football game as Ole Miss has had. Absolutely. Crossing pattern. Interesting. They've been going to the flats. Out in the flat. Out in the flat. And all of a sudden now they see Espy. I'm on a dart right across the middle. Look at this. He's got a seam. Picks up positive yardage. That's what you need to do. That'll give your, your quarterback confidence. He needs confidence right now. Rosano, the fullback, takes the pass to the 48. Ontarius Thomas picks up the tackle. That'll be about four yards shy, the first down. Here's our Pizza Hut scoreboard. Wow, Rutgers wow. up by a couple in the second quarter now. Iowa touchdown better than Wisconsin. And the Wolverines over the Spartans. And Duke by 10 over Clemson. Goodness. Pearson. There was not even a glimpse of a hole on that run by Pearson. Got back well, to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there's no hole up front. You got to see that hole. Watch this. Everybody sealed along. He gets nicked in the backfield. There's nowhere to go. You got a lot of white shirts moving to the football. Mark Brown being one of them. You just you got to open up that seam where he can run through. Marco McNeil, big number 92, has his, his game face on today. Third down, and how about that? All 11 defenders on the line of scrimmage. Quick hitter, and that'll be a first down for the Rebels. Chris Collins with a big catch. Chris had a big game last week. Ten catches, 138 yards versus Arkansas. Flowers had 11 catches. Yeah, you mentioned to Dave, all players, everybody on the line. Look at that. Not one person back in this area. Nobody. I mean, they're right up there. They're saying, hey, if you're going to beat us, <laughs> now you get up on that line so you can worry that quarterback, get pressure on him, put, make him throw that ball quickly. 
On first and ten, Manning hits Espy. Espy picks up five on the play before he's swarmed by a bunch of white jerseys. Horace Willis, first man to make the tackle for Auburn, but Espy trying to get some action going for the Rebels. This is an inner, this is that underthrow screen where you run along the line and let those big linemen get out there. But what Espy does, he cuts so far across the field, he runs right into Dontarius Thomas. But all of a sudden, you get the feel that uh, Eli Manning's starting to get a little bit more into the offense, more into the flow. Well, he's hit five in a row. Make it six in a row. That'll be close to a first down. The first down marker is between the 36 and the 37. They'll mark it at the 37 and a half. So there'll be a yard shy of the first down. The third down and one. Pearson checks into the game for the Rebels. Four wide receivers. Quarterback sneak by Manning, and I think his six foot five frame was probably good enough to get the first down. Eli Manning doesn't run a whole lot, but uh, picked up his first rushing touchdown last week against the Razorbacks. And that's going to oh, be oh. Oh. six inches. Wow. Now, do you go for it? You punt it away. But Dave, this is a tough situation. Yep. This is where tight ends have been a big problem for Ole Miss this year in terms of injuries. Of course, Doug Ziegler's out. Bill Hartsfield's banged up a little bit. Justin Sawyer moved out there and played a little bit last week. He's hurt. So you can't really go to that three tight end set, but they'll bring Hartsfield in all and Rice. First down for Eli Manning. Boy, and that's when you walk up to your center. In this case, it's Ben Claxton. You say, listen, you just come off that ball as you can. You get the big guards. They blow out there. Look at them just coming off that football, trying to get stop the penetration. And then you let Manning just slide for head for the first down. Keep the ball and move the chains. Well, this has been a very solid drive for Ole Miss. It's now 10 plays that started at the Ole Miss 20. And this is exactly what that defense needed. There's a little break on that sideline. 6.30 and counting in the second quarter. Manning steps up in the pocket, fires a bullet. That's caught by Collins at the 20-yard line. That'll be another first down. That was just one of those fastballs, and there might be a mark on uh, the <laughs> chest of Chris Collins. Well, sometimes when you catch this ball, it'll stick in you, and that's what Collins has to do. I thought for a minute there he bobbled it. You see him behind him? But that was, that was a strike to him. That's like Manning saying, we're getting this thing going. Well, his numbers in his last seven attempts say that. He is perfect, seven of seven for 50 yards on this drive. Manning again. This communication with his receiver, Espy, the freshman out of Madison, Mississippi. Boy, that's something that we don't see with Ole Miss. You don't see mistakes in that offensive passing pattern. Eli Manning will spread it out. 11 receivers caught a pass. Versus Arkansas, including eight that had two or more, and 18 different players this year have caught a pass. So if you're a receiver, you're, you're going to throw it to a game. Over the middle, it's Collins to the 10. That'll be about a half a yard to a yard shy of the first down. Carlos Rogers on the stop for Auburn. And a lot of times the quarterback will go back to a receiver that's just caught a big pass for him. And Collins had caught that one earlier. He creeps across the middle, throws it to him. Move those chains. Just keep it going. David Cutcliffe has taken a little bit of heat the last couple of weeks around here. But Dave, he was so positive with us yesterday. Yeah. It was hard not to believe that he felt good about his team coming into this one. He just thought they had a really good week of practice. And maybe they're putting it together right here. 
On third and short, they lose a yard. Boy, what great penetration that time. Jay Ratliff, I mean, he's in the backfield two yards. Number 83, right of your screen. He comes underneath the block, then squares up, and when he gets those hands on you, you're going down. Well, Ole Miss brings out the kicking team. Jonathan Nichols will attempt a 30-yarder. And it's a good decision. You've got to get points. You haven't moved the chains. This is your first drive. Field goal is up and good. Nichols has now hit seven straight field goal attempts. Play 67 yards, and Eli Manning put it together on that drive. Seven of nine for 50 yards. But Tommy Tuberville will take just the three and yeah. give his offense and Ronnie Brown another chance. Well, they've got a lot of time, four and a half minutes before half. Well, fans, you will see a couple of great games next Saturday. Arkansas at South Carolina or LSU at Kentucky. Fred Talley has been running wild with three straight 100-yard games as he leads the Razorbacks into Columbia to take on Lou Holtz's Gamecocks. And in Lexington, Jared Lorenzen and R2 Spinner will give the nation's number one defense all it can handle as the Wildcats look to continue their surprise season. That'll be next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. But be sure and check the listing in your area for the game that you will receive. How about Fred Talley, what he's been able to do? He has 559 yards rushing in his last three games. Unbelievable. And Jonathan Martin has 85 tackles which leads the South Carolina defense. And then of course in Lexington Jared Lorenzen closing in on 8000 passing yards and Brady James those two will square off Brady really put oh. forth an unbelievable effort last week uh, last week against Auburn just a just a dynamite performance in a losing effort. Yeah Tommy Tuberville told us that hey he made a believer out of me. D. Durham. Durham out over the 20, still on his feet. Falls forward to the 23-yard line. A return of 19. Let's check in with Dave Baker, who's down on the sidelines. Buzz? You know, Dave, when we were talking with John Latina yesterday, he said that the Rebels were going to try to do a lot of different things. Spread the field, do some different formations, short stuff over the middle to try to make it basically a passing running game. Eli Manning did a great job of that on that last drive, but boy, that last carry right there, it's just a glaring example of just how bad this Ole Miss running game has been here in the last uh, couple, three weeks. Yeah, we thanks, Buzz. We showed you the graphic uh, coming into this game. Uh, the last two performances, last two Saturdays, they're averaging .75 yards per carry. Brown all the way through the near side in motion, and the handoff goes to Trey Smith, who is tripped up, gets to the 25, a gain of a couple on the play. What a weird year it has been in the SEC West. And Auburn's win last week, they've really opened up some doors for Auburn. And, uh, you know, Arkansas not out of it, but they some things have to happen for them. Ole Miss, of course, uh, uh, can't afford to lose another one. But uh, certainly it added an extra week of um, anticipation for a lot of fans. Fakes the handoff, keeps it. Campbell dives close to the first down, loses the football. It looked like he was down, and he might have gotten enough yardage for the first down in the process. Crowd wanted to fumble, but came out when Campbell hit the ground. Well, I thought to myself when I saw number 99, Josh Cooper running out there, if he doesn't get him, Jason Campbell is going to run a long way. Good block downfield. Again, was he down? The ball. Oh, yes, he's, yeah, he's down. Good call. Brown can't cause a fumble. Campbell got the starting job last week against LSU. Wrestled it away from Daniel Cobb. The offense looked pretty sharp last week. And it helps when you have Ronnie Brown carrying the football. This time, Ole Miss right on the spot. Justin Wade gets over there to make the tackle for the Rebels. At halftime, we'll be taking a look at the Alltel halftime stats. Dave Baker will be around to get you through our halftime activities coming up in about 2.45 on the game clock. 
And as Auburn looks at second down and 13. Campbell going deep, looking for Willis. Passes. Incomplete. I thought for a minute Travis Knight batted it up in the air and it fell back in his lap. And the Ole Miss coaches want the interception, and I don't think they're going to get it. Unbelievable. He made a great turn back inside. Oh, my. Watch this. Now, he's going to look back inside, which every good defensive back should do. I thought the ball bounced off his chest straight up in the air. Let's watch when he comes down here. There it's down. Now look at the ball. The ball goes up. He caught that thing. Oh, oh from that angle, wow. It sure looked like he did. Well, it's third down and 13. Play action again. Campbell under pressure. Campbell well shy of the first down, and Auburn will have to punt it away. Jamie Mitchell tripped up the quarterback. Timeout taken by Ole Miss to stop the clock with 2.10 to go before halftime. Boy, that was a. Uh, I thought he had the interception. Yeah, I did too. Well, these two clubs uh, have met uh, over the years 27 times, if you count this one. And one of their more memorable moments was in 1971 at the Gator Bowl. That's when the Rebels and the Tigers got together and matched two of the greatest quarterbacks in SEC history together as Pat Sullivan of Auburn and Archie Manning's Ole Miss Rebels met. Sullivan passed for 351 yards and two TDs to one of his. One of those went to his favorite receiver, Terry Beasley. Manning had 275 yards of total offense with one TD on the ground and one through the air to Floyd Franks. The Tigers came out on top 35-28. By the way, Manning was wearing a plastic sleeve on his left arm, which was broken earlier in the season. And there is Archie on hand, as he always is, to watch Eli play, but uh, played that season in a lot of pain with that broken arm. And as a matter of fact, in their uh, champions room here on campus. They actually have the cast on display that Archie wore in that 1971 Gator Bowl and looks more like a, a sling than a cast. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's hard to believe Archie played that game with that on his arm and still accumulated 275 yards. And he still holds the single game passing yardage mark over 430 yards he had against Alabama in that great shootout against Scott Hunter in the Crimson Tide. Knuckleball punt. Jason Armstead fields it at the 20. Armstead has one touchdown for a, uh, on a punt return this year. Well, they have to go downfield, obviously, in a minute and 57 seconds. You want to have a positive note going into halftime. They just had a good drive. I look for them just to just keep doing the same thing. Look at the little crossing patterns. Throw the dump to the outside, but one time you've got to go deep, kind of keep them honest. Manning will go under center. Offset eye, Pearson, your running back. Manning hit as he throws, balls loose. Who's got it? And Ole Miss retains possession as the ball just squirted around in a big circle right around the 25 yard line. Well, whenever a quarterback fumbles the ball, the one thing you don't want to do as a defensive lineman or linebacker is to let go of him, and that's what they did. When he fumbled the ball there, they held on to Manny. Keep him away, because he's one of the few that know that the ball is fumbled. Manning fires, pass is caught at the 40-yard line. That, that'll be good enough for a first down. That'll stop the clock, a gain of 14. Chris Collins with another catch, but a flag down in the Ole oh. Miss backfield. That looks like holding oh. back there. Oh, boy. You just move the change. You stop the clock. Holding will kill you. Ding off to it from the previous spot. Still second down. 
Right, looks, looks like uh, with a minute 21 left, looks like we got Terry back with us. <laughs> Thank goodness. Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC, presented by Don Pablos. Looks like some sprinkles coming down a little bit here in Oxford. 116, 115. Manning under pressure again. Fires on the run. Great play from Carlos Rogers. And flags come down. It wasn't that great, I guess. Well, I the thought, receiver was Trey Freifogel, and it may be that left hand on the back, Dave. Exactly. I thought Carlos Rogers would run it step for step with him, but you cannot put that hand up on the back. You can reach in with that right hand, but you cannot put your hand on the, on the receiver. And that is a uh, big break for the Rebels. Well, Rogers is their best cover man. He's a little nicked up coming into this one. What was a game time decision whether or not he would start? Pass interference against the defense. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. That was a big, big break. And let's go back and look at it. You be the judge. Well, number 14 is Carlos. He's running step for step. You see? Yep. He's got that left hand on the back. Can't do that. Did good job with the right hand. Got a little sloppy with the left. And over the middle. Oh, right through the hands of Traveris Robinson. Chris Collins, the intended receiver. Boy, that's that's the second one that we've seen that just floats. This ball just is not, this is not the Manning that we've seen. Thrown off of his back fit, foot kind of switched feet, and again, just let the ball float. Look at that. That's not the, the Eli Manning that we've seen. Dontarius Thomas was making his way toward Eli and got his arms up and Eli kind of had to short arm the pass exactly. a little bit didn't want to follow through with it and that's probably why it sailed. Second down and 10. Manning steps up in the pocket hits Espy at the 39 yard line that's a heck of a catch from Espy under a minute to go. Pressure coming from Auburn. Manning throws it up in the air looking for SB and runs out of room and Ole Miss wanted a pass interference call. Horace Willis on the coverage. And I got to tell you, I thought the official was going to call interference on that time. And he may have, but I think he ruled the ball is probably uncatchable. That's exactly what he's going to rule on it. This is interference when you put your hand like that. But you see where the ball was thrown? He started to reach. Again, you see him reach back for it, but then he thought about it and said, hey, that ball was not catchable. Cody Ridgeway will punt it away. Marcel Willis back to call the fair catch, does so at the 25-yard line with 25 seconds to go here in the first half. 37-yard punt by Cody Ridgeway. We talked about it a few moments ago, Dave, the West, and what a shootout it has become. And LSU, Auburn, Ole Miss, Arkansas, all still in the picture. Uh, Alabama might be playing the best football in the West, but they're ineligible to go to Atlanta and the championship game. But they have a chance to really mess this whole thing up. They have Auburn coming up. They have LSU coming up. I mean, let's face it, they can cause havoc for a lot of Yes, they can. Uh, all those teams still in it. You know, LSU certainly has the, the best shot at it uh, with only one league loss to this point. But uh, everybody else, you know. It, it, when you're playing each other, it can, it can quickly change. Here's Campbell. Campbell under pressure. Fires on the run. Throws it out of bounds with 16 seconds to play in the first half. Interesting call by Tommy Tuberville. Stand back there, you got 25 seconds, what do you do? Take a knee? Uh-uh, he's throwing for 30, 40 yard uh, passes. He's trying to go downfield. I remember uh, last year, Auburn, Arkansas. Auburn threw a uh, interception late in the first half that Arkansas picked off, scored a touchdown a couple plays later and got some momentum and, and really changed the game. Handoff goes to Brown, and that'll do it for the first half. But an impressive display by tailback Ronnie Brown, the sophomore out of Cartersville, Georgia, put on a show. 
16 carries, 151 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. He'll go catch his breath. Ole Miss will go back, regroup. They're a long way from being out of this. It's 14 to three at halftime at Oxford's Vaught Hemingway Stadium in an SEC West showdown. There's Ronnie Brown. That's a man that uh, the Ole Miss Rebel defense will keeping an eye on, and that number two three. 152 yards, averaging almost a first down every time he runs with it. A couple of touchdowns. It gives him seven touchdowns in the last two and a half games. Cadillac who? I'll tell you, he can make you forget Cadillac Williams. Cadillac back uh, at home watching, and uh, we talked about it earlier, had a, a tough, tough surgery to re re repair that broken leg, and we wish him the best. He is a uh, class act and a guy who laid it on the line for this football program, and it's tough to see him go down with an injury. And you know, the same thing could be said for the number of injuries at Ole Miss, including their tight end Doug Ziegler, who's a, a, a captain, a, a guy they relied on heavily, who broke his leg as well. And I don't say that in any disrespect to Cadillac Williams, but boy, Ronnie Brown has stepped it up. Jason Armstead at the goal line. Armstead to the 20. Eli got off to a very slow start in the first quarter, two of nine, and then got his rhythm and uh, hooked up with Mike Espy and uh, Chris Collins a few times and finished up 11 of 21 for 80 yards. No TDs, no interceptions, but uh, really had to battle some pressure. Eli was getting uh, uh, not knocked around, but he could feel some of those white jerseys. Yeah, a lot of pressure on him. He had to move in the pocket. When you move in the pocket as a quarterback, you take your eyes off downfield. They've got to start throwing some completions. Manning to fire on first down. Pass is knocked away on the far sideline by Roderick Hood. It was intended for Bill Flowers. Well, that is just great coverage by Hood. I mean, you're running man for man. You've got him one on one, stride for stride. You just reach up and flick the ball away. Watch this. You're all by yourself. You're on. A, you're just on an island out there. Great play. Once again, all 11 defenders on the line of scrimmage. Dansby breaks off. He's the deep man now, but the pass comes near side. Rashawn Pearson with the reception, brought down by Junior Rosegreen in a good open field tackle. Boy, that was a strange defensive alignment. Dansby, their linebacker, ended up playing free safety yeah. after all was said and done. I know. I saw him dropping back. I'm going, what is he doing going back there? But when you've got the speed of a Dansby, you can, you can do those kind of things. No huddle from Ole Miss on third down and five. Once again, they're all at the line of scrimmage. Manning fires again, looking for Espy. He was out of bounds and came back inbounds and was the first player to touch the football, possibly. Yeah, but he was forced out of bounds. Carlos Rogers forced him out of bounds. Again, watch this. He's pushing him out of bounds. And he comes back in, catches the ball in. You see the flag come out for interference. You see the hat go down for where he went out of bounds. There's the interference against the defense. It's a big catch. First down yardage, plenty of it out near midfield is where they finally ended up. This will spot it at uh, the 40, just shy of the 47. Pass interference against the defense. The penalty is declined. The results of the play is the first down. Just a little bump. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can't do anything to hinder the receiver. You know, the old hook in his arm, those type of things. The referees have been on it all afternoon. Ronald McClendon gets his first carry of the game. Ronald had some fumbleitis last week. And, uh, and you know what? There's nothing up front. I'm going to tell you, there's no push. There's no seam there. You see him going down. He's getting tripped up in the backfield. You've got to drive. If you're an offensive lineman, you've got to drive him off the block. Get underneath him. Lift him up. Make a seam. That's not what Ole Miss is doing right now. Manning in the no huddle offense. Throws and fires. Pass is caught. Armstead at the 
Auburn 41 yard line Horace Willis with his fourth tackle this afternoon. But uh, this is how Ole Miss is going to have to be successful. And that is throw these uh, five to 15 yard routes all day. Absolutely. And see they're going no huddle so that doesn't allow Auburn to make defensive changes to get in that nickel or dime with the five or six defensive backs. Manning going for it all. Has his man. Collins touchdown Rebels. 41 yards. An 80 yard drive in six plays. I think David Cutcliffe meant what he said. We're anxious to get the football at the start of the second yes. half. One after is up and good, and for Collins, that is his sixth touchdown reception of the season. A great opening drive by the Rebels. They trail by four. Well, it didn't take very long before Chris Collins and Eli Manning with the Rebels on the board here in the second half. It's 14 to 10. Deep Durham. Back to return the kick. D hit at the 22. And Dave, what a play on that last touchdown. Chris Collins gets great separation. Rashad Walker loses his cushion, and you will not see a better pass than this. Perfect, right over his shoulder. He looked it in, and that can be a game breaker. That can get Ole Miss back in this football game. Saw Chris warming up before the game today. I said, you ready? He says, am I ready? <laughs> Get so. He showed it there. Your actions speak louder than words. Ronnie Brown trying to get the corner picks up a couple boy his speed is deceiving Travis Blanchard out there on uh, Ronnie Brown and was closing the gap and Brown just down raced yeah. him for a couple of yards. You know I used to hate running backs like that. They run at one speed and just when you're starting to get there they shift into another gear and then they run away from you. Fullback is Brandon Johnson tailed back is Ronnie Brown. And the handoff goes to 23. And 23 falls forward to the 35, and that'll be enough for an Auburn first down. And Dave, if, if you're Auburn, what you want to do is come out here. Ronnie Brown's had a great half of football. You come out here, you establish that run. You don't try to fool him. You go all the way down the field, just running the football, controlling the line of scrimmage, and you set the tempo. You take it back. Johnson, Cooper, Wallace, a couple of tight ends in the game. Roma should do in motion. The handoff goes to Brown. Brown trying to get that corner again, and this time Travis Blanchard played it a lot better. Didn't let Brown get that corner. Yeah, but he still got almost five <laughs> yards. I mean, he's just he's one of those ones that can just take the football and he can run to it. And you've got to credit your offensive line. We talked earlier about Para, McNeil. They're just controlling the line of scrimmage. All right, so Dave, they held him to five yards, but that's about five less than his average. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they're, they're making improvements. Yeah. They're on average of nine per carry this afternoon. And he goes in motion. Trey Smith now, the single setback. And he'll take the quick handoff. And Trey, the little man, that might be close to another first down. Justin Wade on the tackle. Trey, the 5'10", 190-pound true freshman out of Venice, Florida. I don't think he's a 190, though. Well, you know what? Everybody talks about your stature in there, but he runs a lot bigger. You, you make the point. He doesn't run like he's 190. He's scampering in there. He's hard-nosed. When he got that chance last week, boy, he answered it. He had a tremendous game last week against LSU. Had a great run. It took it down to about the one late in the football game. Willis in motion. Play action. Campbell fires over the middle. Has a Roma should do. Has the pass knocked out of his hands 
at the 15 yard line Travis Blanchard saved a potential touchdown. You talk about a great defensive play. That is a great defensive play. Good play fakes. You're holding those linebackers and you go down and watch the defense. You get that arm in there. You break the, that arm down. You see the catch. Now you just rip down, pull one of the arms away. That's excellent coaching because he had the football. Roma should do. would love to have that again. He'd wrap that up a little bit tighter. He's a big play guy. He's their big play threat really on offense right now. Here's the handoff to Brown. Ronnie Brown runs over defender out to the 45 of Ole Miss. That'll be a couple of shy of the first down. Boy, you talk about delivering a hit. When you're the safety, Eric Oliver, you're supposed to do the hitting. He's doing the receiving. Look at that. Oh, wow. that looked like Deuce McAllister the other night in the Saints-Falcons game when he ran over a safety and scored a touchdown. Deuce, the former Rebel. Brown got nothing on third and short. Might have lost a yard. Eric Johnson, who's playing in a lot of pain today, came up with a big play, and Auburn has to punt it away. That was a big, big play for the Ole Miss defense. That was huge. You've given it to your best running back, and all of a sudden you get Eric Johnson darts through into the secondary, brings him down short, and you stop the drive. We've all back to punt. This is an extremely high kick that will hit at the 10 and down at the one foot line. Rashad Walker, back up corner, makes a big play on the special teams. 45 yard punt for Damon Duvall and the Auburn Tigers who lead by four. We'll return to Oxford after this. Auburn leads Ole Miss 14 to 10. Rebels have the football, but they can't get much further back. High throw intended for Espy. Let's check in with Buzz. You know, Dave, sometimes the smallest changes can make the biggest difference. Last week again, Arkansas, Ole Miss went with an old huddle for the first time this year. They found they liked it so much, they've come back with it to start the second half of play. And it really seemed to have Auburn back on its heels that last series. When Ole Miss finally got to the end zone, the question is, can you do that now realistically when you're so backed up against your own end zone? And realistically, Buzz, when you can't run the football either. It's a tough, uh, precarious spot for the Rebels. And that rush to Rick Rosano gets, I don't know, a foot. A foot, exactly. I don't, you know, I, I don't question coaches. I know they, they try to keep everything honest. But hey, nothing's working. Throw that football. Nice oh, house scoreboard. Yeah. 35 to 3, Michigan over Michigan State. Duke still leading Clemson and Alabama up by a touchdown. Arkansas ahead of Troy State. Here we go. Third down nine. Oh. And Manning falls in the end zone. That will be a safety. Reggie Torbor will get credit. For the stop, and but Manny just tripped. I wonder if his center didn't step on him. See, his center might have stepped back on his foot. Oh, that's just that's just a tough play. Center when he's snapping that football takes that little drop step. You may see it again. Watch the center when he steps back. Yeah, see his right foot. He steps back on Manning's right foot. See that a lot, trying to get out of that center quick. And Manning was actually slow getting out from underneath the center. Well, when you got when you got your foot stepped on. But you know, Dave, it's yeah. one of those situations. That's why that is such a dangerous spot to be in. You cannot afford the simplest of mistakes yeah. on a third down from your half yard line. Well, there's Ben Claxton. That's, of course, the center. Great leader on this team. That's Doug Buckles and uh, Claxton talking. Can't see Ben from here. And that's the reason they were 
pinned back in there. Damon Duvall, the All-American yeah. punter, who lost his field goal kicking duties, but I talked about it earlier. He might have been a player of the game last week for Auburn, the way he kicked, kicked off and punted and kept Dominic Davis of LSU from breaking the game open and getting involved in the game realistically. So 16 to 10 after the safety. Cody Ridgeway will punt after the safety. And he will punt it from his 20. Trey Smith, Marcel Willis back to return. So Auburn will more than likely get uh, good field position here. There's the punt. It's end over end, little squibber. Oh, he went out of bounds. And it went out of bounds. Oh, no. That's going to move it forward even further north toward midfield. And Auburn will have a short field. What does that compound your problem? It's treated as like a kickoff, even though he punts it. Kick out of bounds. Kick gets the ticket team. Auburn elects to take the ball on the 50 yard line. First down. Well, for the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. Jason Campbell runs back onto the field. It's 941 remains in the third quarter. Campbell today 5 of 13 for 43 yards. He came in completing 71 percent of his passes this season. Campbell rolls has some running room but will throw it and picks up the first down in the process. Flag down in that Auburn backfield however. Danny Lindsay 68 looked like he might have gotten his paw wrapped around Charlie Anderson. That's exactly what I think it is. I think it's going to come all the way back. It's going to negate a big play. Interesting. I was really surprised. I thought they would go ahead and just keep on running the football. Boy. Bobby Petrino, he didn't like that, the offensive coordinator. Holding against the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first down. Danny Lindsay, the Douglas, Georgia native, sophomore. Eight penalties for Auburn. They came in fifth in the league in penalties, averaging 56 yards a game. So it'll be first and 20. Ball rests at the 40 yard line. And off to Ronnie Brown, and he's. Going nowhere, I think. The whole team is chasing him, and the Rebels finally bring him down at the 25. Charlie Anderson finally gets credit for the tackle. A loss of 15 on the play. And this is called pursuit. When a running back turns back, it's called pursuit. Coach teaches it. Angle of pursuit. Hang on. Wait for help. You can see all the blue jerseys getting there. Charlie Anderson finally brings them down. And another huge loss. Look at the field position they've lost. They were at midfield. Second down and 34. First down marker is the Rebel 40. <laughs> Pass is caught at the 40, but they're still. 20 yards shy of the first down. Silas Daniels brought down by Eddie Strong. Silas playing with a strained groin muscle. Well, if you're in the old miss huddle right now, you're saying if you ever want to get a pass rush, you get it right now. Third down, long yardage, almost 20 yards. David Cutcliffe will tell you we've got to get pressure on the quarterback. Third down, 19. Oh. Looks like false start on that offensive line. It may have been Danny Lindsay again for 68. You know what's amazing? You should never false start. Prior to the snap, false start against the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains third down. Oh, we saw, you yeah. know what he saw? Ben Nallen yeah, move. Exactly. He saw Nallen squat. But when you're an offensive lineman, when you break that huddle, you repeat the snap count and the play to yourself as you run to the line. It's kind of like a reminder. I'll tell you, though, it's tough, though. Yeah. I mean, you oh, watch yeah. the guy next to you move, the guy with the football, and now, I mean, your natural reaction to beat him. Exactly. 
Auburn two of eight on third downs, but they're looking at a big one at third and 24. All kinds of movement from Ole Miss defensively. Campbell hit as he fires, passes, caught and fumbled. Eddie Strong recovers at the 44. What a huge hit by Kelvin Robinson. Crossing patterns are the most dangerous, but watch the pressure first of all that Jason Campbell gets on. Boykin gets the pressure to start right there, but when he gets hit, when he's coming across the middle and he gets hit, Kelvin Robinson just layers. Oh man, he just stuck him in there. Eddie Strong comes up with the ball. That's better than the punt, Dave. Look at the field position. An excitement on that old Miss bench. You know, in the NFL, they charge you about 50 grand for a hit like that these days. <laughs> Manning fires. Flags come flying. Hood pops up. Thought he had good coverage. Bill Flowers was the intended receiver. I'll tell you, I'm not so sure that wasn't great coverage. Manning's just picking him out. Watch this little come back inside now. Oh, there's oh, the there, that's the hole right there. Yep. Not on the yeah. tail end of the play, but you're right. When he made the motion back inside, he put that arm in there and grabbed him. Can't do that. Pass interference. Against the defense, that is a spot foul and automatic first down. You know, you look at an offense like Ole Miss, they had 90 yards at half. I mean, they're not in the football That's game. That's what I said, David. Yeah. It was amazing to me, and I know what they, they're having trouble running the football, but this still this offense still has a lot of weapons, and that's what surprised me with only 90 yards. They yeah. can still move the football. They're doing it now. Manning will throw again. Flowers wide open at the 35. Flowers down to the 30 or the 27 yard line. Carlos Rogers makes the tackle. That'll be close to a first down. Gain of gain of about uh, nine on the play. And all of a sudden the offensive line is giving Eli Manning time to throw. And you see the separation there that Flowers gets out in the flat. When you've got that time to throw, it makes things work. Good enough for a first down, so they'll move the chains. First and ten, ball on the 27. Delayed handoff goes to McClendon, who does what the coaches don't want him to do, and that is dancing around. You know what? I, I know they want to keep him honest, but let me tell you, they are throwing the ball all of a sudden. And the run is not what's keeping the defense honest. It's the offensive lines giving them time. There's nothing there. Hey, I know you want to keep on running it, but don't. Eli Manning started this game, Dave, in the first quarter, two of nine for nine yards. Since that time, he has completed 14 of 19 passes for 160 yards and a touchdown. I think he's got his rhythm back. And officials talking to both clubs saying lighten up down there in the uh, trenches boys. There's a lot of pushing and shoving going on. Second down and ten. Manning pump fakes. Nowhere to go. Fires across the field. Pass is caught by Rosano who dives to the 20. And Manning saved the day. Well, Manning almost fell when he came off the of center. When he started to come back, he looked as if he almost fell. Watch him again coming off there. You see his quick little stutter steps. Now he comes out here. He's got pressure. Look at this throw. He turns around, sees him coming right in his face, and he just unloads it out there to Rosano. Wow. Instead of being about a six, seven yard loss, he just answers the call, picks up positive yardage. Gain of seven. There's our first half comparison. Already Ole Miss has surpassed their first half total here in the third quarter. Pass is caught. Freifogel taken down at the 12 by Dontarius Thomas. That'll be a first down for the Rebels. And Dave, I see pass blocking now. That time I watched Belton Johnson sticking in there, just holding them out. Now that's a big stick right there by Dontarius Thomas. He picks you up and he puts you down. But you've got to expect that. Boy, that's a, oh man, that's a that's a clinic and tackling. But all of a sudden I see this old miss offensive line giving Eli Manning some time to throw. 
Eli Manning wants a timeout. He'll get it. 5:21 to go here in the third quarter. Ole Miss is driving. They're down by six. It's getting interesting in Oxford. Back after a word from your local stations. 16 to 10. Auburn leads Ole Miss, but the Rebels moving here in the third quarter. Let's check in on the sidelines and Dave Baker. Buzz. Dave, you were talking about the extracurriculars. A minute ago, Marcus Johnson and Mark Brown got tangled up. Johnson, 6'6", 320. Eli Manning went and grabbed him by the neck and said, hey, keep your head in this thing. We can't afford a penalty at this end of the field. Maybe, just maybe, we're seeing the emergence of Eli Manning, the leader on this football team, besides outstanding quarterback. Thank you, Buzz. Keep an eye on that. First and 10 from the 12. Manning scrambles. Fires, throws it away. Pressure came from Jay Ratliff, the sophomore out of Aldosta, Georgia. And a flag down at the 20. They may say it's intentional grounding, but uh, Pearson was, or excuse me, McClendon was out there and he broke back to the quarterback and Manning just threw it over his head. Yeah, I don't, I think this is just, yeah, see, there he is, McClendon. You see him in the picture. Yeah, he threw it out of bounds. I don't think that was as bad as the first one. Yeah, they're going to wave it off. Good call. I think I it's a good call. call. I do. Think. But that's not the kind of pass I think you're going to be successful with. Stand back in that pocket, run those receivers, little cross patterns, see if you can get that one on one and find somebody. Well, second down at 10, ball on the 12 still. Armstead, Fry, Fogel, Collins, your receivers in the game. Rosano and McClendon in the backfield. Here comes some pressure from Auburn. Quick hitter. Pass is caught. Touchdown. It's Chris Collins for the second time today. And Ole Miss has a chance to take the lead. This is one of those wow patterns. Carlos Rogers is evened up, and once you lose it, and he makes that inside cut, he's into the, in the end zone. Look at this great cut in there by Collins. He's wide open. His line gave him time to throw the ball. Point after is up and good by Jonathan Nichols. And how about this? Who would have thunk this? <laughs> As we went to halftime, Ole Miss would lead Auburn 17 to 16, but that is the case. And for some of the 60,000 that left at halftime, you better get back. Well, when you blitz, you put your corners in one on one coverage. And that time, Chris Collins made him pay for the blitz. He beat Carlos Rogers on a post pattern. Chris Collins coming off a 10 catch game against Arkansas where he had 138 yards his five career 100 yard games is a rebel record and now has for the season seven touchdown receptions including two today so the speedster the junior out of Gloucester Mississippi having another big afternoon and I'm just uh, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm surprised no. because I know how good this passing game of Ole Miss can be. But nonetheless, Auburn's defense in the first half, Dave, was awesome, and Eli's just picking them apart right now. Well, 90 yards, that, that tells you they didn't have much of an offense. But they all of a sudden, you mentioned that one time when they went for it and made that first down, that it changed the momentum of the game, and it did, Dave. Lee Rogers will kick off for the Rebels. Back to return. Trey Smith, number 22, and Dee Durham, number 27. It's a line drive. Smith will knock it down at the 8 and then fall down at the 10. That was a tough ball to handle. A bullet that was probably looking like a knuckleball coming at 80 miles an hour. And Smith might have been better off just to let it go. And you talk about field position. Wow, if you're Auburn, you're starting inside, the, right at the 10 yard line, 11 yard line, terrible field position. But they need to regroup. Jason Campbell needs to go in there and be the leader. There's the true freshman. Well, Jason Campbell facing his first adversity as a starter. Brown getting into it and making a lot of noise. Campbell fires. 
Pass is caught, but maybe a yard or two. Silas Daniels on the reception. Actually, they'll give him four with forward progress. Next week, LSU and Kentucky. How about the offense of Kentucky against the defense of LSU? Some of you will see that game. Others will see Arkansas and South Carolina. Can the Razorbacks keep the momentum going? Check the listings in your area for the game that you will see. It's LSU, Kentucky, or Arkansas and South Carolina next Saturday right here on Jefferson Pilot Sports. High formation. Play clock down to four. Oh, now the momentum has definitely switched sides. The Rebels are feeding off the crowd. And, and I've been in this situation. There's nothing that lifts the defense more than when your offense scores. Look at the number of blue shirts coming to the football. That time Anderson gets in there. He gets in low, makes the tackle. But they're just rising up because they're excited just like the offense is. Ronnie Brown, first half or second half. What a difference. 44 yards difference. Brown switches to the left of Campbell. Third down and nine. Campbell fires incomplete. Tigers will have to punt. Dave, what's happened to Auburn's offense? I know. I'm thinking to myself, what happened to Ronnie Brown? I mean, we're talking about somebody that had incredible yards. Another one, Jason Campbell. We've seen him scramble. He's not been able to scramble today. They've not been able to find wide outs. It's just like they shut down. They're just going through a lull. And if you're old Miss, you're going to get great field position. You should get the ball inside the 50-yard line. Gene Chiswick, the offensive coordinator. We saw him. He's probably getting a little antsy. Fourth and nine, Duvall's punt is a good one. Drives Armstead back to the 36, and he fumbled it. Flag down. At the 48 of Ole Miss, a 52-yard punt. Let's wait on that flag. Ball was in the air when that flag was thrown. And that could back up Ole Miss. They were going to have pretty good field position. If it's against the Rebels, it's going to drive them deep into their own territory. You, know, you mentioned Jason, I mean, David Duvall. Golly. I mean, that time they're going to get the ball in midfield. Look at this. Well, the first half it was terrible for Eli Manning. He had nothing going right. But the second half has been incredible. I mean, he's thrown with authority. He's got results. He's moved the chains. He's thrown touchdown passes. He's had great catches. Chris Collins. It has just been, it's almost like a different Eli Manning. There's the second touchdown by Collins. Wow, what a half. Well, that the holding call against Ole Miss will move them back 10 yards from the end of the play. So it's first and 10 from the 22. Some pressure coming. Manning has time, fires. Pass is picked off at the 35. Carlos Rogers. Rogers to the 21 yard line of Ole Miss. Oh boy. Well, Mike Espy was the intended receiver, and Rodgers just stepped in front of him. Well, we call Carlos Rodgers the best cover man, and you can only challenge him so many times. Top of the screen. Look at number 14. Gets great cushion. Little slip there by Espy. Espy slipped. We talked about that turf. Rodgers did not. Well, we brought that up at the top of the uh, show, Dave. That is a treacherous area of the football field. It's just uh, literally dirt, soft dirt, almost sand that's been painted. And that cost Ole Miss there as Espy fell down. Here's Brown, Ronnie Brown. Brown stiff arms on his feet. Touchdown, Tigers. They answered the call. Well, offenses make you pay when you make a mistake. And watch Ronnie Brown go through here. A missed tackle right in there. You've got to bring them down. But good, good selection, good vision into the hole. And we see that Ronnie Brown speed. He bursts through there. And Auburn's going to go for two. Tiger! 
Dre Smith in motion. Campbell to the corner of the end zone. It's Smith. It's good. The conversion works, and it's 24 17. The Auburn Tigers have added to their total of points scored off turnovers. They came in leading the Southeastern Conference. They have now scored 98 points off of opponents' turnovers this year. That is impressive. Man, the seesaw we've yeah. had here in the here third quarter. Goodness. Well, what a huge turnover. What a huge turnover. Because Ole Miss has got all the momentum. They've stopped them. They've, their defense has come out. Now they've got to regroup. Now they've been stung. Yeah, that's just a, a, a bad break for Ole yeah. Miss. I mean, you don't expect your receiver to fall down. Well, exactly. He was in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He fell down. The receiver and the defender did not. Ball came right to him. Carlos Rogers on SP. Well, Ronnie Brown. What are his totals now? 24 for 181 and three touchdowns today. He has nine total this season. And he has eight total touchdowns in the last three games. There's a guy who can, uh, in about 20 seconds, tie this game up. That's Armstead back to return the kick, along with Chris Collins. Dangerous weapons. Duvall will kick off with that strong leg. And it's another good kickoff. Ball will be down. It'll be come out to the 20 yard line. But well, here's the interception again. Yeah, this is what leads to it. You see SB slip right there. Carlos Rogers, he's got the football. He just comes, steps right in front. And again, watch this hole by Ronnie Brown. Good vision right back to your left. He sees the hole, sees it open up just as it opens up. He runs through arm tackles, breaks tackles, and scores. See the numbers rushing and passing today. Well, here you go, Rebels. Yeah. You fought your way back, you got the lead, now you got to do it again. First and 10 from the 20. 196 yards through the air for Eli Manning. Pressure coming from the backside. And Eli felt it. Trey Stallings was trying to drive Torbor to the outside, but Torbor was a little too close for Eli's comfort. I don't think he didn't feel that, or at least hear it. He saw it, sees that flash on the backside, and says, whoa, somebody's in the backfield. For the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. 2.54 to go in the third quarter. It's second down and 10. Quick throw to Collins. Collins dodges a couple of defenders, falls to the 29-yard line. That'll be a yard shy of the first down. Travis Williams makes the tackle for Auburn. Now where Manning has been successful in that little short out pattern, he needs it right now. They need to keep the ball. Hey, we just saw that update. Rutgers by a field goal in the fourth quarter over the Miami Hurricanes. Oh boy. Wow. Third down two. High formation. Manning will throw it. It's caught. First down. Move the chains. Chris Collins with another catch today. You know what's amazing? If you can't run the football, you got to throw it. You got to rely on the receivers. They haven't been getting a push up front. You can go to that man, number eight. He's caught everything thrown his way. That's Chris Collins. John Latina, the offensive coordinator with the hat leaning forward. That's Kurt Roper in the near part of the screen. Quarterback's coach. Manning will throw again over the middle. Pass batted in the air off by the Auburn Tigers it's Horace Willis another unfortunate break for the Ole Miss oh. Rebels or oh, when it rains it pours this is you don't want to tip a ball up in the air if you're a receiver don't tip it you see how high the ball goes 
When that ball is tipped, every wide receiver, I mean, every defensive back yell, fire, fire, they turn and look at the ball. Looks like Mark Brown popped it up in the air. He and Bill Flowers were battling for the football. First and 10 for the Tigers, 2.03 to go in the third. Here's Brown. It's three or four on the play. Josh Cooper makes the tackle. And Dave, we talked about Ole Miss doing what they do well. That's what Auburn has done well. They've given the ball to Ronnie Brown. Don't do anything fancy here. Take control of this football game. There goes Carlos Rogers off into that Auburn locker room. He picked up the interception moments ago, and Auburn converted into a touchdown. Look at the rushing yards today. Wow. You know, same thing last week. Arkansas ran for over 200. And Ole Miss could only manage 34. Here's Campbell on the keeper. Campbell to the Ole Miss 45, and that's where he stopped. That'll be two yards shy of the first down. L.P. Spence makes the tackle, and Justin Wade getting up a little bit slowly. Carlos Dansby getting some work done on that uh, left ankle over on that Auburn sideline. Dansby's been held pretty much in yep. check today for him by his standards. Yes, exactly. He <laughs> sets different standards. Yeah. Third down and a yard and a half. Two tight ends. That's Cooper Wallace in motion. I formation. Aroma Shadu in motion. The handoff goes to it's a play fake. Campbell keeps it wide open as Diamond to the 30, down to the 25-yard line. What a play fake by Jason Campbell. He sold it extremely well. When I watched Ronnie Brown run in there, I thought he had the ball, too. We've watched Ronnie Brown run with a lot of authority. He ran in there, just really sold it. How about this play? Watch Ronnie Brown. He's going to come in there. Everybody's going after number 23, right? He doesn't even have the ball. Stand back here. Look at Jason Campbell. Wide open. Diamond sneaks off the line out into the flat. Huge play. Diamond got up a little slowly. He made it his way to the bench, but in the middle of the field is Matt Greer, who's still laying down or trying to figure out what is wrong with him. Greer. Might have just gotten his leg tweaked a little bit. Tim Mullen, the head athletic trainer out there, taking a look at that calf of Greer. And Diamond on the other side, looks like he might have twisted up an ankle in the process. Go back and look at the play oh. fake. What a! What it's a, amazing. What? Well, there's Ronnie Brown. He's going to come up in here. You play fake. Everybody is held in here, right? The quarterback's got the ball. Look at Diamond. Just sneak off the line of scrimmage. I mean, it's just it's a it's a perfect call. I tell you though, Ole Miss did a nice job reacting back to that football, Dave, because obviously in that situation, everybody in the building's oh. thinking Ronnie Brown, Ronnie Brown, Ronnie Brown. But Ole Miss didn't give up the 40 yard no. touchdown play. No, exactly right. They played their keys. They were late getting to them, but you play your keys. All of a sudden you see somebody sneaking right. off the line. You say, hey, wait a minute. That's my coverage and you run to yeah. it. But that's one of those plays that could have gone the distance. But everybody uh, will line it up again. We'll get an update on Matt Greer and Lorenzo Diamond from Dave Baker in a matter of moments. But here we got 20 seconds left here in the third quarter. First down and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. Here's Ronnie Brown. Brown to the outside. Ronnie Brown runs out of bounds at the 18-yard line. And Dave, what makes that go is Brandon Johnson gets a great block. I mean, watch number 45 get a block there. And then look at Aroma should do. Look at him. He just tangles him up in there. Downfield, you don't think of those wide receivers making blocks. That's what allowed Ronnie Brown to get to the outside corner. Good block by Johnson. Good block by Aroma should do. And another Auburn Tiger down. Danny Lindsay, the sophomore guard out of Douglas, Georgia. 
Six two close to three hundred pounds. Well you know where they are right in that bad uh, spot of field. I know we've talked a lot about it but it's hard on offensive linemen because you can't dig in. It's just an uneven surface and your feet a lot of times slip out from underneath you. Buzz what do you got on the sidelines. Uh, good news so far on the Auburn sidelines. It looks like Lorenzo Diamond and uh, Carlos Dansby just got their ankles tweaked a little bit. They're getting retaped on the sidelines. They're both up and running to be ready to go. Same deal for Matt Greer over on the uh, Ole Miss sideline as well. He's now bouncing around and looks like he'll be able to get back in. And it looks like Danny Lindsay will jog off as well. And that's good news. Danny, one of the anchors on that line. It's. Uh, to deal with some injuries much like every team in the league I, I don't remember a year Dave where there's been more devastating injuries and more injuries across the board yeah. for every team yeah tough injuries broken legs broken arms yeah exactly. separated shoulders exactly. concussions, torn Achilles you name it it's yeah. happened broken foot Lanier Gothi for Ole Miss Brown chased down brought down by McKinley Boykin the freshman out of Bessemer Alabama that was a big play by a guy who's got a great future that is the end of the third quarter it's a one touchdown game and Ole Miss might have found some offense behind Eli Manning but Auburn knocking on the door back with the fourth quarter after this. Rebel cheerleaders think this is far from over, and it is with 15 minutes to go. It was 14 to 3 at halftime. Ole Miss opened up the third quarter with a great drive. Chris Collins with a touchdown reception. He would later add another TD reception. But Auburn also has scored, and now they're knocking on the door, but they're looking at a third down and two from the 17. Handoff Brown. First down marker was right about the 15 and a half, and they're going to spot the ball at the 15, so that'll be a first down. Eric Oliver and Lel P. Spence converge for the tackle. Well, this is good blocking and good recovery by the defense. Get rid of those blocks, stand them up, don't let them fall forward, help push them back. We well, got the first down. I liked how Ronnie Brown hit that hole, that yeah. no dancing. Going right at well, it. Well, that's the difference in third down and one and two, and when you're trying to get the big one to the outside. Brown closing in on 200 yards. He has 193. <laughs> See what that was all about. Probably a offensive lineman moving. Prior to the snap. False start against the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first down. Ronnie Brown looks like uh, he might be in a little bit of pain back there. But here's our Gatorade third quarter stats 213 rushing yards, and of course, 90% of those coming from Ronnie Brown. Ole Miss is thrown for 211, and they still cannot run the football, even though they basically gave up on it after halftime. First and 15, ball sits outside the 20. The play action to the fullback. Campbell under pressure fires. Wide open, Ben Abamonu. Touchdown. Abamonu snuck free, and there wasn't a defender around. That's exactly what he did. He snuck through. It's almost like tight end delay. What he does is he comes across the field and nobody sees him. Watch him just come into your picture right in here. No one's even close to him. Breaking coverage, breaking, didn't follow the keys. Oh boy. And Duvall in to attempt the point after. And he almost kicked it out of the stadium. <laughs> ben Obamanu with his second receiving touchdown of his young Auburn career.
Ronnie Brown and company sitting on that bench talking to his fullback Brandon Johnson and his tight end Robert Johnson after the touchdown Auburn has extended their lead 31 17. The ball's kickoff is returnable. Jason Armstead takes it to the 28 yard line. Hey fans, now is your chance to enter Toyota's You Pick 'em Sweepstakes. Just go online at jpsports.com, click on the Toyota banner to register and pick the winners. Weekly prizes will be given to the participant with the highest point total. The grand prize winner to be announced on November 23rd will receive a new 2003 Toyota 4Runner. The Toyota You Pick 'em Sweepstakes. See jpsports.com for the official rules. Entrants must be legal residents of the states of Florida, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. First and 10 from the 27. Here's a little pitch. McClendon. Nothing happening. A gain of a yard. But what a great play from that corner. Oh, Horace Willis. He's the corner. Dave, when you get blocked, you got to get back up. Watch number six right there. He gets up, just dumped up. Square. Get oh, back what up. a play. Isn't that amazing? That's what you're taught. Get up off the ground. That is a heck of a football play. Second down and eight. Manning has time. Armstead makes the catch as he gets hit. Good catch. He was crushed by Junior Rose Green, but that'll be a first down move to change. Now Ole Miss has plenty of time since they throw the football so much. Absolutely, and they can make it if they do play catches like this. You know you're going to get hit in there, and you just got to hold on to that football, take your blow, and come back and say, hey, you give me your best shot. If I'm uh, Eli Manning, that's the kind of receivers I want. A check at the line from Eli. McClendon. McClendon. To the 48. And that is their longest run of the day. They might have just doubled their rushing yardage. Well, McClendon, he's got the speed, he's got the movement, but he hasn't made good decisions in the past. This is a good decision. Cut back against the grain, look for your blockers. Now, put that football away. Don't, uh, don't get careless with it. He picked up uh, almost 10 yards on that run. Well, they went from 10 total yards rushing to 19 on that carry. <laughs> And here come the chains. They may have they may have doubled it, gone from 10 to, to 20. If they give him the first down, I think he's a little bit short. Ooh, by a nose of a football. Boy, the temperatures have dropped, Dave. They uh, they started a kickoff around mid 50s, and I bet they're in the mid 40s. Oh no! It is a cool afternoon in Oxford on a fall day where the leaves are changing. And I have a feeling Buzz is probably changing too on the sidelines. Changing colors <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from pale to pale blue. <laughs> That's my boy. Uh, second down and in inches. Rick Rosano bouncing off some defenders. A first down inside Auburn territory to the 44. Dontarius Thomas was the man Rosano bounced off of. And all of a sudden you get the, the idea, wait a minute, maybe we can run the football. Look at Rosano just bouncing off blocks. Keep that momentum, that weight going forward. Keep digging those legs. And a little bit of extracurricular activity on the tail end of that play, but that's what you want to do. You want to come off that football and open a seam. First down and 10, and all 11 again are on the line of scrimmage. This is the fifth time, sixth time we've seen this from Auburn's defense today. There is nobody back, and Dansby slides now to play that free safety. Manning to throw. Right on the money! 
Inside the 10, it's Tay Biddle, the freshman out of Decatur, Georgia, covered by Horace Willis. But what a throw from Manning as it picks up 35. Well, he read the men on the line of scrimmage on 10 of the 11, and he made them pay for it. He's got Biddle at the top of your screen, and he throws a strike. Not bad coverage on the play. Look at this, one-on-one -on -one coverage, but just a perfectly thrown football. Couldn't have thrown it any better, Dave. That was no, absolutely Dave. good. <laughs> That's why you practice as much as he does. First and goal from the eight. Manning falls down, throws it in the air, nearly caught for a touchdown. Horace Willis knocks it away. Manning was falling on his backside when he let go of the football. I think he got his foot stepped on again. Watch him, he's falling down. Look at this, and he just throws it to the corner. Again, is this interference? Watch this right here. Ball's in the air. No. No, absolutely. That is a heck of a defensive play. You better believe it. That's Horace Willis. That's great coverage. Second down and goal. Here comes some pressure from Auburn. They pick it up. Manning was looking for Biddle again, but miscommunication. I wondered what a factor Dansby might have been in that play. Dansby was in the backfield. And I wondered if Manning just kind of peeked out of the corner of his eyes and saw number 11 coming his way. Well, Dave, is this uh, two down territory Absolutely. with 11.22 to go? You're down a couple of touchdowns? Absolutely. This isn't field goal range. I'd be really surprised at a field goal. Four receivers on set, third and goal from the eight. Manning fires, touchdown! It's Collins again, his third of the game. An yard touchdown, the touchdown. Chris Collins has eight catches, 106 yards, and now three touchdowns this afternoon. Well, he gets separation, he gets speed off the ball, and he is a sure handler of the football. He catches it when it's thrown there. Point after is good. A late flag comes flying in at the four yard line. But Collins, what a day, what a week he's had. If you go back to Fayetteville, Arkansas, when he had 10 receptions against the Razorbacks, 18 catches in two ball games, and now has six career 100 yard games, which is setting breaking his own Ole Miss record. The junior. 6-2-190. Well, here's the call. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit against the kicking team. The field goal is good. The penalty will be assessed 15 yards on the kickoff. So the extra point is good. And it appears that Auburn might have pretty good field position after the kickoff. But the folks that left the stadium and watching this on TV you might want to head back. We've got something going in Oxford. It's a cool afternoon in Oxford, but uh, those that stayed around, they have been treated to an offensive explosion here in the second half. There is a little bit, give you an idea of how cool it is. That's Drano, our end zone cameraman, bundled up. You know, he walked around yesterday, Dave, in short sleeve and t-shirt, uh, t-shirt and shorts, and trying to act macho, but we know better. Suzuki presents a look back at a free. Trey Smith still on his feet. Look at him drive the pile out over the 45. And Auburn does have pretty good field position after the Ole Miss personal foul on the point after. And speaking of uh, moments ago, being in the cool elements, the guy that uh, sucked it up for us, Dave Baker's on the sidelines. Hey, Dave, I think one of the things that's been most impressive to me this year is the job that Bobby Petrino has done in his first year as offensive coordinator at Auburn. He's lost his star running back. He's gone through a quarterback change, and he seems to really have a great pulse as to when to ratchet it up or when to slow it down. And it's going to be key for Auburn not only to get points here, but to control the tempo in this football game. 
Yeah, I think they need a couple of first downs at least on this drive. You don't want to give Ole Miss any momentum. There's a good way to get some of those first downs. Hand it off to 23 as he'll give you 10. Those have been the key numbers for Auburn today, 23 and 10. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, number 23, Ronnie Brown. Bobby Petrino has to love him. He loves having Ronnie Brown because Ronnie Brown does not go down with arm tackles. He runs through tackles. A lot of backs would go down right here. He runs, runs right through the block of the tackle, I should say, of Charlie Anderson, and he picks up positive yards. Well, he's gone over the 200-yard wow. mark, a career afternoon for Ronnie Brown. Congratulations to him. And here's Trey Smith, the true freshman out of Venice, Florida. That'll be a first down. Gain of 10. And that's uh, what we talked about. A couple of first downs always kind of deflate the team that Absolutely. just scored, you know? For the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. 9.53, 9.52 and counting as whistles blow. Flag down. Brought to the snap, encroachment, it gets the offense, lined up in the zone. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. That's funny, for all year we've been fighting the battle of the tight ends flaring out, not yeah. having enough guys on the line of scrimmage, and that's the first time I've heard an encroachment on the offense. You know what that is? That's where the offensive lineman comes and he sits down, and he's in the neutral zone, and, and he just can't, he can't pick his hand back up and move back out because he's already set. 12 penalties today for Auburn for 85 yards. Brown goes in motion to the far side. Campbell throws to the inside. Eddie Strong got his paw on it, and a flag comes flying. Pass if that, it's going to be hard for me to say that's past interference on the defense after the ball was batted in the air by Eddie Strong. It's a free ball at that point. Yeah, they're calling. I think that's what the call is going to be. But uh, Eddie Strong hit it before it even got close to him. And that's exactly what the officials are in there talking about. They said, wait a minute, ball was tipped. I think you're exactly right, Dave. There is no foul on the play. The ball was tipped. Second down. Dave, watch Eddie, watch Eddie Strong get in there. Get that hand up. And I want to tell you right now, if you're Ole Miss, you've got to make a stop. This will help. Get the hand up right there. Good play. React back to the football. But Ole Miss right now, they need a huge stop. There's one of the men that can do it, Eddie Strong. He'd love to have his counterpart, Lanier Gothi, in there with him today. But Lanier watching with a broken foot. Handoff goes to Brown. Ronnie Brown got back to the original line of scrimmage. Charlie Anderson with a tackle for Ole Miss. And here we go. This will be a big third down for Ole Miss as the clock approaches nine minutes to go in the football game. And Dave, this is one of those games where the loser, while they're not mathematically eliminated from an SEC West championship, it's pretty doubtful yeah, it's if they tough, lose. Tough uphill climb. No bigger play than this right now if you're on either side of the ball. Trying to set up a screen to Brown. They do so, but Ole Miss is all over it. Campbell backpedaled all the way down to his 35. And David, was a, it was a good call. You run a screen out there. You can see the number of players sliding out there. But look at the blue shirts. They're running with a passion, trying to get to the football. Justin Wade in there. He's the one that just swipes the, the foot away. Wait a minute. This is a field goal, buddy. Well, Damon Duvall will kick long field goals, according to Coach Tuberville, and this is a long one. This is from 50 yards. His long this year is 39, and he's only 4 of 10 in 2002. No win. 
The kick is away. The kick is up. No good. He pulled it left. He definitely hit it hard enough. It just hooked left. And Ole Miss has good field position. Well, we talked about them needing a stop. They got their stop. But well, what a leg on Damon Duvall. I mean, that thing had the leg to make it from 60 yards. He just did it. Let me tell you, actually watch this one. We, we saw him last week at home. Uh, turn his back on a couple of field goal attempts. That's how it's been at Auburn this year. But are we looking at overtime? The teams that have played the two most overtime games in the SEC. Well, they're pretty close to that setting right now at 31 to 24. McClendon gets stood up at the 39. Let's check in with Buzz. Hey, David, interesting decision there by Tommy Tuberville because the last time Damon Duvall punted the ball, he pinned Ole Miss at the one. That led to the safety. Tommy Tuberville chose to go for the points instead of the field position, indicating to me that he believes that Eli Manning can get this Ole Miss team in the end zone one more time. Good point, yes. Buzz. Excellent point. Second down and four after the six-yard pickup by McClendon. Play clock at six, but Manning gets the snap off. Fires, passes high. He's been high on that yeah. same pass four or five times today. Yes. But good coverage on the play. You got to credit Auburn. They're doing a great job covering. Man on man, running those, just running the seams right with them. Roderick Hood that time, I mean, he was flat out running with Armstead. Third down and four. Ole Miss seven of 15 on third down conversions. They came in 10th in the league. 35% conversion rate. Pass is caught. That goes to Trey Freifogel, and that's going to be about a yard shy, maybe a half a yard shy of a first down. What do you do, Dave? Well, you've got to get the first down. Watch Fire Fryfolk will come out here into the flat. I mean, he's got to get the first down oh, yardage. Call it a first down. Oh wow! I thought that I thought we were going to see him come up short. That was a great spot. Boy, it was. My goodness. <laughs> You're saying the yard short? Yeah. Like, well, maybe a half. Hey, move the chains. Ole Miss will take it. McClendon. Some daylight. That's another first down as he moves it into Auburn territory. Mark Brown brings him down. McClendon's got excellent speed if he can get through the initial contact at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they said he danced into the hole. Look at a little stutter step there. I think that but this is good better. coaching. I think it's really good coaching. Don't you do the stutter step, but explode through the hole, and you're exactly right. He is better. Yeah, he's getting better. It cut down on the dance, that's for sure. It was exactly. a one song dance, not a two song dance. <laughs> Does it again and gets a couple on the play. Now what you do in this situation is maybe do a little play fake, pull that football down. You've got the defense playing honest and go upstairs. Maybe look for Flowers, look for Collins who's had a whale of a day. When the Jefferson Pilot Sports crew is on the road covering SEC football, we like to eat at Huddle House and always enjoy their big house breakfast and lunch platters. We've got a tremendous platter for you right here in Oxford, Mississippi. A great football on the SEC on second and eight. Manning under pressure. Manning goes down at the 48. DeMarco McNeil leads the way. Boy, just broke down the pocket. I saw number 92, DeMarco McNeil. What he did is he did a swim move. That's where you fake inside, come back over, and go to the outside. Super, super pass rush move. Ole Miss, as the clock ticks, remember, only has two timeouts remaining. They burned one earlier in the third quarter. Third and 13. Pass is caught. That'll be a first down at the 34-yard line. It's Trey Freifogel, the sophomore. 
Dave, you won't see a better example of looking the ball in than Fry Fogel. Watch this, number three is coming across the field. Watch him stretch for it. When that ball hits his fingers, he pulls it back in. Manning, 284 yards through the air. High formation, a lot of movement. Doug Buckles might have popped up, number 62. Down in 15 now. Good to have Terry Brown's mic working again. Yeah. Lost him in the first half, our referee. Four wide receivers and a short shotgun. Delayed handoff goes to McClendon. Ronald McClendon down to the 30 yard line. Traveris Robinson with his seventh tackle, teaming up with Mayo Sal for the stop. Dave, you know, as I look at McClendon, I'm thinking to myself, no one questioned his speed, his ability to run. They questioned his decision. And you're, you made a good point. He has really, really run through the ball, run through the hole with authority. Look at the play selection. McClendon, eight carries, 40 yards. That matches their two-game previous total. McClendon will add to that. That was just a gigantic hole by the Rebel offensive line. Dansby drags him down. That'll be close to a first down. Let's see what they do with the chains. They will bring them in. It's an official timeout. Look at this hole. I mean, there's a hole in there that anybody can run through. Good quick feet into the hole. Pick up those positive yards. And all of a sudden, you're talking about an offense that had 10 yards, had just gone away from the run. And now all of a sudden they're able to run the football with authority. I wouldn't say authority. Well, yeah. uh, well, when I say <laughs> authority, I mean compared, compared, to, right, yeah. <laughs> compared to what they were. <laughs> they, they have 52 yards on the ground, and they can add another first down to their statistical story today. And an old Miss coach's box. Bought Hemingway Stadium and the new addition in that end zone. They, they could explode if Ole Miss can put it in the end zone here. It's the 10th play of this drive. Started at the Ole Miss 33. McClendon breaks a tackle. McClendon inside the 15 down to the 12. Hello, Rebel running game. McClendon with those quick feet, good decision, no dancing in the hole, just find a little seam, explode out there, try to set up a couple blockers. You know, we talk about coaching, coaching has made a difference in his running talent. Yeah. They spent a lot of time with him this week, and nobody was more frustrated about the performance in Arkansas last week than Ronald McClendon, who fumbled two kickoffs that resulted in 14 points. And he really wanted to prove today that he was a part of this team. The junior college transfer dancing his way to the outside, inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. Mark Brown and Carlos Dansby bring it down. Boy, nothing going to the outside. Watch this. No one's out there. And he just sets them up in there. Now use that speed to get to the outside. I thought he should have kept on going to the outside. I think with his speed, he could have made the corner and made more yards. Second down and seven, they'll give him three. Now they can't pick up a first down if they get it inside the one. High formation. McClendon again, he might be just uh, a little tired. His legs might be giving out on him on this drive. Well, they've done good on the edges with the run, and now they, that time they run up the middle. Ole Miss has gone with uh, the pass today, 284 yards. They've thrown it 45 times. Chris Collins over 100 yards receiving, and Eric Oliver out of the safety position leads the way with seven tackles. But a big down here, third and seven from the eight. Spread formation, here's Espy in motion. Manning 
Manning can run it, but he wanted to throw it, and is it picked off? It is. Traveris Robinson with the INT with a buck 32 to go in the game. It looked like Eli Manning could have run with the football. His third interception of the day. I cannot believe that he did not run that football. When he stepped up in the pocket, there was nobody in front of him. He had a chance for a first down. Watch his offensive lineman give him a hole. He steps up nicely. Right here, you see him think about it, and then all of a sudden it's, oh no, but look at this. There's nobody in front of him, right there. And he throws behind him. Freibogel was open for a second, but he threw behind him. Now, Mark Brown, the linebacker, was there, but Manning could have definitely gotten it into the five. Wow, huge play. Ole Miss has a couple of timeouts remaining with a minute 32 to go in the game. They were at the seven yard line to tie this game up. Man. Well, you have to see it in the eyes of the quarterback. When he stepped up there, he's got such confidence in his arm. He thinks he can just throw for anything, and for David Cutcliffe, it's just got to be so disheartening. Well, we can expect the Rebels to use a timeout here if Auburn doesn't pick up the first down. The clock has moved under a minute. And off to Ronnie Brown. And here comes the timeout. Oh boy, 44 seconds to go. It's been a good one in Oxford. Come back with us. We'll return after this. Eli Manning pondering what could have been. Jason Campbell hasn't been spectacular today, but uh, you know, once again, just managed the game pretty well for this Auburn team. But a stop here by Ole Miss will force Auburn to punt it. And they'll have one last chance. But the first down will seal the victory for the Auburn Tigers. And Ronnie Brown adds to his totals. He has now carried the football 33 times for 219 yards. And Davey gets to the hole so quickly that the defensive players can't even get off their blocks. He's got that acceleration into the hole. Ole Miss calls a timeout with 38 ticks remaining in their season in terms of an SEC West race. We'll be back after this. Auburn. Looks like they'll pick up the victory on the road in Oxford. This this game has turned out to be one of the uh, quiet gems of the SEC schedule the past few years, and it's been a good one today. First down and ten, and Auburn will take a knee. Tommy Tuberville picks up the win. The Tigers go to six and three and four and two in league play. Ole Miss falls to five and four and two and three. It was an impressive display by Ronnie Brown, but gutsy comeback by Ole Miss when it looked horrible. They had a chance. They had it at the seven with a minute and a half to go in the game and turned it over. We'll come back to Oxford after this.